Welcome back my fellow degenerate watch addicts. I've got some Sigma level watches for you today from the ultimate Chad watch company that we all know and love, Invicta. Both of these watches are limited edition to the max, which means good luck trying to find these anywhere. If you are trying to find these, to help you out, the Pro Diver version is model number 26165 and the Tuna Can style version is model number 26201. Be warned that these watches aren't readily available and I would even say that you'd have better luck finding a Rolex under retail. As a degenerate, I can be bought, so if you want to buy it from me, feel free to send me a minimum six figure offer and then we'll talk. In all seriousness, I freaking love these watches. They're super cool and a perfect example of what a licensed watch should look like. In my experience, licensed watches aren't anything more than a blank watch with some gimmicky stickers on it. In this case, I feel like Invicta actually put some effort into making a good watch that also had Star Wars design elements in it, so you get the best of both worlds. I'm not 100% sure if the Pro Diver is a one of one. I have seen other models that share the same design, but they're not the same model as this one. However, I am 100% sure that this specific watch is number one from the production run, and I think that's pretty cool. Obviously, this specific number has zero bearing on the quality of a watch, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't think it increases the value, at least in some capacity. I wasn't initially a big fan of the whole R2-D2 thing, but believe it or not, it's because of this Invicta Pro Diver that I got into it. At first I wanted it because it was serial number one and it was rare, and rare Invictas is a great subcategory in watch collecting. But once I received it, I forgot about the whole rare thing and was more focused on the shameless fun this watch offered. I mean look at this thing, how cool is that? And being a degenerate watch addict, you know I couldn't stop with this one, and that's how I ended up with the Tuna. For the Tuna, I mainly got it to pair with the Pro Diver, but a large part of it was also because I just really liked the tuna can shape and was interested in seeing what an Invicta tuna would feel like in hand. I gotta be honest with you, it's nothing like a Seiko tuna and objectively pales in comparison and quality. But with that being said, it's still a cool watch and functions perfectly fine. Internally, there's nothing special with these watches. They're both powered by NH35 automatic movements and both come with the lame-ass flame fusion crystal. But both are solid in construction and finished in a way that satisfies my expectations. They also come with all the other bells and whistles one would expect from an Invicta diver such as the rotating bezel, a screw down crown, and a screw down case back. These two watches stand out purely because of their design and to that end they do so with top marks. Both of these watches have layers from the bezel to the bezel pip to the indices etc etc. These layers create a real visual presence and indicates that some actual thought went into making them thus creating the feeling that these are legitimate watches and not simply cheap money grabs. The way that they aren't only styled after R2-D2 but actually look like they could be a part of R2-D2 is outstanding. They both scream Star Wars in the best kind of way with little touches of Star Wars related text and emblems and I don't know about you but I love nerding out to this kind of stuff. I would dare say that it's watches like this that would make even the biggest Invicta hater possibly change their stance because it's nice to see a childhood classic represented on a perfectly decent automatic watch. And who doesn't like R2-D2? Even non-Star Wars fans are down with the R2, which makes these watches fan favorites across the board. I've had people who'd never even consider owning an Invicta reach out to me online and ask me where I got these watches because they thought they were fantastic. It's a great thing being able to break down barriers like this, because at the end of the day, watches don't need to be that serious, and the point is to have fun with it all. Watches like this embody that mindset perfectly because they're not hot horology, but nice enough for a casual enthusiast to get that feeling that they're getting a real watch, but not so serious that they can't enjoy it. Of course these are just my thoughts, collecting is not such a black and white thing, 
and it can vary significantly from person to person. One thing remains true for everyone. Enjoy your collection. These watches I very much enjoy and hopefully I was able to showcase something you hadn't seen before. But that's all I have for now. Stay classy. I know I won't.